be good to pay. He was a man of words. He worried. Jesus knows what worry is like. He knew exactly what worry is like. Jesus knows what being, 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 being homeless is like. He knows what being homeless is like. Jesus knows how to struggle. Jesus knows what it's about struggling. He knows what struggling is like. He, he, guess what? Jesus killed that struggle. He knows what crying is like. But Jesus cried. He's well. Jesus well. He knows. He, he knows. He, he feels your pain. He feels everything that you go through. That's why he went through it first for you. He knows about sorrows and pain. God wants you to know He loves you so much. Thank you so much, He loves you so much. He would do the same thing that you go through each and every day. But He did not sin. That's the point. He didn't sin. And also, He went even further for you. He went to the cross for your sins. So now, we got to come to a recognition. We got to recognize the next word. We got to come and look at the cross and look at what Jesus done for us at cross. And then we got to come and regret. And come and agree with Jesus Christ that we are sinners. We got to come into agreement with God to guess what, Lord? Lord, I am a sinner. I am a sinner, but I know a God, I know a God, I know a God who can save me from my sins. And that was Jesus who went to the cross for me, who died for my sins. So I ask you, Lord Jesus, to forgive me of my sins and turn from your sins and turn from your sins and turn to God's righteousness. Stop living for God. Turn away from sin. You know what? Sin is dangerous, people. Your pain with sin and sin will destroy you. Sin will destroy your life. Young people, you're playing around with sin and sin will destroy you. It will take you down. It will destroy your life. Don't play with sin. Sin is here. Because we sin every day. We lie, we cut, we say things we're supposed to say, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, we think with people, you know, you know, you know, we, 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 we do so many bad things. Do not play around with sin, because sin will destroy you. Sin will destroy you. It will destroy your life. And guess what? It, it has destroyed many people's lives. And guess what? Sin even, sin even destroyed people, and guess what? They died. They died without Jesus. That's why They want to play around with sin. They want to go out here and steal cars. They want to go out here and murder somebody. They want to go out here and, uh, and, uh, and, and beat somebody up. They want to go out here and do all these evil, wicked things. That would destroy your life. It would take you out of here. Sin would take you out of here. You play around with this. But Jesus wants you to turn away from sin and turn to righteousness. To live for Him. Don't live for the devil. Don't live for the devil. You go down here, you lie. You lie and you cheat. You steal. You commit adultery. You, you have sex without marriage. You do all of these fornications. You do all of these things. You go cheat. You go cheat. You go to these bars. And you go cheat and drink and beer and everything. And go cheat and fill your, and fill your body up with all that junk. Your body is not made for that. Your body is not made for drugs. And it's not made for liquor and beer and drink and beer. Your body. God did not make your body for that. He did not make your body for those purposes. He made your body for you to worship God. To glorify God with your body. Not to go out here and go out here and go, and go, go to the club and do all that drinking and all that smoking and, and, and having sex out of marriage and everything. You know what? That would destroy you, man. That would destroy your life. God forbid you to do that, to live a life like that. Turn from your wicked way. Teach your children. Teach your children not to do like you do. Teach your children not to sit. Teach your children not to go down the path you worn down, the wicked path you on. Don't be a example to your child. You sitting in your house smoking weed, and your child looking at you smoking weed. You sitting in your house with your company, and you got all this drinking beer all on your table. 
What kind of stuff do you get before your cow? Then your cow grew up and guess what your child said, Mom and Daddy, you did it. You did it too. So why can't I do it? That is not a good example. You tell yourself it's not good to do it. I'm trying to stop it. I got a habit, but I need Jesus to help me to stop it. Because it's destroying my life, destroying my family, destroying everything around me. Teach your children about the things of God. Teach them the things of God. Teach them righteousness. Teach them righteousness. Teach them right the things of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let them out of your wicked ways. You tell your son, you tell your daughter, don't go in that nigga's store. Don't go to the club. No, don't hang out with that boy. You're not married to him. That's not your husband. But guess what? You keep hanging out with him, you guess what? You become a whore. You become a whore. Guess what? You become your pupil. Because now you think he owns you. He keeps all mad. He didn't put a ring on your finger. He didn't put a ring on your finger. But you call yourself boyfriend and girlfriend. Where did this come from? Boyfriend and girlfriend. The Bible don't speak about boyfriend and girlfriend. You're dating a holler. That's what you're doing. You're, just, you're, just, you're walking around with a holler. And you're the people. This is the gospel. Jay, how you doing? I'm doing quite well. What's your name? Uh, Jonah Mellon. Jonah. I, I like that name, Jonah. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Uh, I'm Jewish. Praise God. Hey, we got a Jew in the so, do you believe in Christ Jesus? That Jesus is the Savior? Is the Messiah? Um, I believe that Jesus was a human being who existed on the planet. Have you ever read Isaiah 53? Have you ever read Isaiah 53? Have you ever read Isaiah 53? 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 Isaiah Isaiah 53 is used by uh, a lot of Christians to prove the existence of Christ. However, what I think, you could, I could be wrong on this one, but what I think is that initially it was intended to be a, uh, it was intended to be, uh, it addresses one person. Who is that, who is that person? People think that it's Jesus, but it was initially intended to be the nation of Israel. They all went to together. No, so it's speaking about Jesus Christ. I'm speaking about, we don't know how long we need to do it. Let me read it to you, okay? We'll pull it up, okay? I want you to hear it. Yeah, what's the, 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 the passage? For there is no distinction, no distinction in this applies to the Jews and the Greeks, because the Jews were, uh, were the chosen ones, but also the Gentiles came in. The Gentiles, which means Jesus died for the whole world. Not just for Israel. The whole world. Uh, 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 Nothing to attract us to him. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, a lot of people think that you are Jesus is like that man with the blonde hair, with the blue eyes. Well, look what it is. There was nothing to attract me to the house. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Wait, 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 wait. When they came to arrest Jesus, when they came to arrest Jesus, and the Jewish leaders to Jesus, and they came to arrest Jesus, guess what? They couldn't even point him out to the crowd. What's right? Jesus is just like any other person. You know? The only, 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 only way they recognized him was when Jesus kissed him. There you go. Okay, we. That's the only way they knew. Because uh, they didn't know who Jesus was. 
He was despised. He was rejected. He was a man of sorrow, yeah, brother. acquainted with the deepest grief. And we turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yes, it was our weaknesses that he carried. It was our sorrow, sorrows that weighed him down. Our sorrows. The devil says some of some of the people are our sorrows. And we thought this we thought his troubles were a punishment from God. A punishment for his own sin. But he was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Lord, oh, put the Holy Spirit up again. Let the Lord lay it on him the sins of us all. Your sins, my sins, everybody's sins. Don't you know when they put Jesus on the cross? It became God. God turned his back on these things because of your sins. When Jesus died on that, on that day, when his torn and persecuted body, and he laid down his head and gave up the spirit, he said, Father, through thy hands I commend my spirit. Guess what happened? The veil broke! The veil! Okay, the, 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 the Pharisees had a veil in their temple. It was about a mile wide and a mile high. No man could tear that veil down. And if it did, it would need like 20, 20 ladders and 20 men to tear that veil down. What happened to the veil? It was torn in half. And what was the veil? God the Father. He was behind that veil. So that means when Jesus passed, the veil came down. We have so a relationship with God. We can come to God now. We can come to God. We don't have to go behind a priest. We don't have to go to a pastor. We don't have to ask a congregation. We can go straight to God. Straight to the Lord. So, 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 so you understand what I said? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I read something that said that it was initially referring to uh, all of the Israelites as a singular being to express the unity among the, uh, the Jewish people at the time. Do I understand your interpretation of it? Yeah. Huh? Oh, I think Nelson might be next. Though. So praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We're talking about our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, so I'm getting back to my word right now. Uh, I just want y'all to know that Jesus loves you so much. Jesus came to die for your sins. He came to give his life as a man. Now, as I was saying, people choose to deny God and go in their own way. And, and guess what? And this, this results in spiritual separation from God. See? So guess what? It's our sins that separate us from God. It says this results in a, in a, this results in a spiritual separation from God. When we want to go and do our own thing. We want to go and live our own way. That separated us from God. So it says this. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that's that's guess what? That's that's the path that we're on. We're on our path. We're on our path as well. We want to go our own way. We want to do our own thing. We want to live the way we want to live. Come on. And guess what? That's what's going on in, in the White House. That's what's going in the our house. Come on. That's what's going on with the with, 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 with the with the president of the United States of America and uh uh uh, uh President Biden. In our uh, in Colombo tonight, her, the her baby, everybody want to do their own thing. Everybody want to go their own way. And that, that's what that comes. That, that is a spiritual separation from God. They want to do it their way. They want it their way. 
But guess what? It's not their way. It's God's way. 